Let's start with a good non-district matchup at Todd Gormley Stadium. Brother Martin and Terrebonne. After a Corey Lambert interception, the Satyrs would cash in. Jordan Thomas hits a hole. Great blocking in front of him. He scores on the 36-yard scamper. 7-zip Brother Martin. Later in the first, after a big pass play, Tory Lambert caps it off with a two-yard touchdown run. A two-touchdown lead for the Crusaders. We move to the second quarter. Lambert. Man, it looks so easy when you're a good back A and B. You have a good offensive line blocking in front of you. That's a 45-yard score. Brother Martin went up 31-0 at the break. They never look back. They take down Terrebonne 38-7. The number two ranked team in Class 5A improves the 6-0 on the year. You may not realize it, but counting tonight, there's just three Fridays remaining in the prep regular season. What up? Welcome to Fourth Down Friday. I'm Ricardo LeCompte. District races are heating up with teams trying to work their way into playoff contention. Our Fourth Down Friday game of the week is a district opener between two really good small schools in the area. Andrew Doak is live uptown with what went down in 11-2A between St. Charles Catholic and undefeated Newman. Hey, Andrew. Hey, Ricardo. Yeah, there was an outpouring of emotion from Newman after their win over St. Charles Catholic tonight because for the first time in 22 years, the Greenies were victorious over the Comets. This game started well for St. Charles Catholic, but then took a sharp turn. After backing up Newman on fourth and forever deep in their own territory, the Comets ran into the kicker and the Greenies get a fresh set of downs. And Arch Manning is following in the footsteps of his family because you don't give Mannings a second chance. On third and 19, Manning a dime to Pike Philibert, and it's seven zip Greenies just like that. And then on their ensuing drive, fourth and one from the 10, Manning to Will Randall with a hell of a grab. Some of these throws, too, just aren't fair. Greeny's up 14. And then their defense holding tough. Fourth and goal from the 14, St. Charles Catholic runs a fake field goal, and it's snuffed out by Newman, holding the Comets off the board. Newman up two touchdowns at intermission. But opening drive of the second half, the Comets respond. Down the field from eight yards out, Comets QB Zach Vicnair plunges into the end zone deficit, cut to seven. Then St. Charles puts the pressure on. Newman now trying to respond to stretch this lead to 10 and put this game away. But the field goal attempt from 43 yards out is blocked and returned deep by St. Charles Catholic. So a chance to score and tie this game at 14. But the Comets are stopped on fourth and five. A huge interception by number seven, Sterling Scott, which would seal the win. Newman over St. Charles Catholic, 14-7. The implications... Now, this game were higher than any other. Uh, we know we know what was on the line. We know what was at stake. Uh, not only the one seed, like you said, the district championship. There's no program I respect more. Uh, Frank Monica is not just a mentor to me. He's one of my good friends. They don't come any better. We knew it was going to be a fight. We expected a, a 14 to 21 point game. Um, we fully expected it. Um, and like I said, it's an unbelievable feeling because we had to work so hard. And Sterling Scott also said after this game, he added that they saw St. Charles Catholic come into their district last year, run the table, and go on to the state championship game, somewhere that Newman has still never been. But Scott said they feel like this is their year, and they don't see that happening again after this win over the Comets. From Uptown, Andrew Doak, Fourth Down Friday. All right, Andrew, thank you very much. Something cooking, spe maybe specially there in Uptown. Heading into tonight, Ponchatoula controlled the top spot in 6-5-A, but three teams right behind the Green Wave, all with just one loss in district play. Two of those teams face off this evening in St. Paul's and Mandeville, usually close between the Wolves and Skippers. Since 2013, five of the meetings decided within a touchdown. Mandeville trailing 7-3 in the second quarter. Devon Tott off play action, hits junior receiver Landon Ibieta on the 39-yard touchdown. Skippers back in front 10-7 on Tott's 15th passing touchdown of the year. Wolves able to answer on the very next drive. Grant Billison, good movement in the pocket, steps up, fires, and hits Garrett Lauterbach. 30-yard score puts the Wolves back in front 14-10. Back and forth we go just before the end of the half. Taught shakes a tackle, gets outside, throws it to the sideline to Caden Costa. The wideout slash kicker scores from 29 yards out. Skipper's going to the locker room up 17-14. Manville able to put some distance between them and St. Paul's in the third. Taught tosses five touchdowns as the Skippers beat the Wolves 38-28 and prove to 4-1 in 6-5A play. Coming up, Curtis tries to stay unbeaten in Catholic League play, facing Holy Cross. And it's hard to play a game without the Friday night lights. We'll explain, but first, some scores from across the metro area.
Three teams remain undefeated in Catholic League play entering week six. Brother Martin, St. Aug, and John Curtis. The Patriots looking to stay that way and tie the Crusaders at 3-0 in district with a win tonight over Holy Cross. The Tigers looking to turn around their season with an upset win over the Patriots, but Curtis looks sharp right out the gate at Joe Yenny Stadium. A very Patriot-like 10-play, 57-yard drive on the ground on the first possession. Buddy Taylor from seven yards out, seven up Curtis. More Taylor. After he breaks off a 35-yard run, He's now back to pass, scrambles, decides, you know what, I can do it myself. Beats the defender to the pylon. The three-yard touchdown makes it 13-0 Curtis after the missed PAT. Second quarter now. Taylor actually showing off that arm now and somehow drops this in the back of the end zone to Javon Davis. Taylor finished with that passing touchdown and four rushing TDs. Curtis runs past Holy Cross, 37-3. Chalmette and Higgins were scheduled to play in a District 8-5A battle at Haas Memphis tonight on the West Bank. Unfortunately, a power outage occurred at the stadium. The lights not working at all. The game rescheduled to tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. If it isn't COVID or is in a hurricane, it's the power not working at the stadium. 2020. Well, we're out of time. Thanks for joining us for the entire Eyewitness Sports team. I'm Ricardo LeCompte. Have a great weekend. We'll see you back here next Friday night.